everybody! Welcome to a setup change for my Tulumnia pomegranate. My goodness, it's about time too! Even though maybe it's the wrong time because look, she's pushing another spike and she is in bloom. Doesn't matter. I have some new growths coming and I want to take advantage of the fact that they will be producing new roots soon. Unfortunately, this orchid, well, unfortunately, <laughs> um, fortunately, this orchid is very, very big and she won't fit into my preferred little basket setup. So yeah, we're going to go into semi-hydro. And while I'm talking a little bit detached, it's because I'm seeing the root system down here is pretty attached. I don't need to save this basket. I would like to save as many new roots as possible. I would have loved to have done this project a little bit sooner simply because, yeah, I wouldn't have encountered new roots doing this. But the weather was against me. Now, even though these are new roots from a growth that is probably maturing back here, when we get it out, I will show you. I have two more growths here coming that haven't started new roots yet. So those are the ones I'm going to be speculating on for any breakage that is going to happen, not may happen, but is going to happen. Trying to weave this basket off the root system. And I wonder if it's even worth trying. This one has clearly gone in and out, but we have to try it. So we'll just chill out. Thank you for joining me. We'll just give it a relaxed vibe of a setup change for my Tolumnia. This will be the first time in a long time that I've put a Tolumnia into semi-hydro. I started with Tolumnias in semi-hydro, but they failed. I got the Leca ratio completely wrong. So I lost two Tolumnias to that setup and then haven't had the courage to try again. But now that I've figured a few things out, throughout the years, I think that semi-hydro is going to work. You see, if I did self-watering, I would need a far too big a pot. And that's not going to work for this species or this hybrid. Tolumnias in general would prefer a wet, dry cycle and a fast one on the root system. I'm going to try and tweak that, manipulate that to give me like a semi-hydro setup that is a little bit on the drier side. I'm going to have a look at that and talk about that when the time comes. And I just heard a click. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. So what I'm going to do now is just try and, you know, tease her out of the basket with at least another click with the least amount of damage. Lots of clicks now. I wonder if you heard that above the noise of the traffic. And here's, of course, a tag inside also doing its part on holding on to roots. So let's see if we can get rid of that. Got myself a somewhat sunny day to do this, but at least it's not blowing a hoolie. That takes care of the staple. There we go. And let's see. Oh, there's another one in and out. Yeah, so the east side is a little bit noisy today. Trying to see where this route here is heading off into. Maybe I can thread it out. I hope everything is in frame here. <laughs> All right, that one's loose. Look, what a shame. Yeah, it can't be helped. I could have left this Tolumnia in here indefinitely. Let the bark just do its thing. I just don't want to keep having it in that Greek yogurt tub. 
And another thing is, I don't want a tolumnia in a semi-hydro setup because these tolumnias have to come inside in my climate. I can't leave them outside all year round. My little rule of thumb is, if you can live outside all year round, then you go into a semi-hydro setup because it's just easier, it's not as messy. So I've got this one root. Uh, what are we going to do? Let's see. Okay. It decided to stay with the basket. All right. Whatever. Ah, what a shame. It, I, you know, this is not going to be an easy task. And then some of these roots will fail. But let me finish my thought. Yeah, you know, the semi-hydro setup I prefer to have for all orchids that live outside all year round self-watering for all orchids that go inside because it doesn't make a mess on my shelves. I don't have to worry about water dripping. You know, the clumsy things that can happen during the colder months of the year where you have to be a little bit more cautious. Yeah. But seeing as my Tolumnia live on a tray in the winter anyway, and I can't get a small enough pot to make like a my own little self-watering setup. It's gonna go into semi-hydro, it lives on a tray, and be done with that, as long as it lives. Once again, I'm kind of risking a different little configuration for this, but I want to give it a go. I know it can be done, and this is the ideal candidate to do it. It's a large enough orchid, she's got so much energy, She's got three new growths that I can see already for the season. Starting a new spike. We'll see if she aborts that. Now I can also be a little bit more, let's say, generous with how much bark I leave on. I'm not going to... My goal is not actually to sit here and try and pick out every single piece of bark. Even though it will degrade in the semi-hydro setup but as long as I see that some things are coming off relatively easily then I'm going to keep going and see how far I get something makes me feel uneasy that's when I'll stop these little roots <laughs> I love them though this orchid has been soaking in calcium and magnesium for yeah, an hour. Not because the roots needed it, but I wanted the bark to really soften up and give me a best chance. And of course, there's a root that sort of, you know, there we go, that snuck into the ridge of the bark. That's a dead one up there. Can we get into this? So yeah, me, oh, and my big hand getting in the way. Sorry if I'm blocking your view. Trying to think in 360 degree angles. <laughs> also trying to listen 360 degree angles in case I need to stop what I'm doing for a moment while any noise pollution passes. Here's another route that just, you know, because the, the, the bark just has this thing that says, okay, grow into me as opposed to, how about you just grow along along the surface? No, just grow into me. This is so far, not counting my chickens yet here, but so far proving relatively easy compared to what I thought it would be. We have ourselves some challenges here, but hey, it's not so bad. I got this orchid from Tokyo World Mark, who went to his friends in Belgium, that nursery, a Kern orchids in Belgium. They sent me a fabulous box of, my goodness, freaked out with every single orchid I unwrapped. It was just great quality, and this bark is great quality. So it is nicely soaked through, but because it's so hard, the roots are relatively easy to pop off, she says. And then 
we are going to stumble onto one thing and it's probably going to have a beautiful green root tip on it. <laughs> you know, exceptions to the rule and all that good fun stuff. But maybe the ones in the middle will be a little bit more of a challenge. Let's just start with the ones we can see and stop getting ahead of ourselves. Am I concerned about the spike not blooming out? A little bit. But if I have to forfeit the spike to get this project done, then that's what I will do. Okay, that's too premature. We're going out this way, all right. Don't care which direction you go, Bark, as long as you go. Look at this gorgeous root system. How's your days been so far? Anybody heading into fall, making adjustments? Anybody heading into spring, making adjustments? Well, we are in spring, but <laughs> the way I'm saying it, you wouldn't think I was. <laughs> I wouldn't think I was either. Seriously. And I still have another couple of rainy days to come. Incredible. I've been working on my patio, trying to give a calculated, like, you know, should you come out? Shouldn't you come out? Is it too premature? But I have to get on with, you know, things in the house as well. All right, did I kink you? There we go. My fabulous chef's knife here. <laughs> yeah, just let me know how you're doing. I usually yap away in my videos, trying to make sure that I, you know, touch the subject quickly, don't waste your time. That's not what this video is about. So, make sure my spike is okay back there. So yeah, let me know how you're doing. How are your orchids doing? Is there anything, anything that you're seeing that you're concerned about? Let me know in the comments. Is there anything you think I can help you with? Same thing. Let me know in the comments. This is not a one-sided rodeo here, people. The interaction for me is super important for as long as I can get it. And I say it that way because the time will come that one day I'm going to be employed again and there'll be less interaction. But I want to take advantage of our interaction while I still can. Because even though I get back to you sometimes late, not just because of time zone, but because of what I have to do here, you know, the animals, the zoo, the walking, letting the bird fly and all that business. I can't be sitting at my desk while the bird flies. It's, it's an agonizing couple of hours when that happens because, you know, there's not much I can do. Because I have to watch him. Spend time with him. So I almost feel like those hours are like, ugh, I'm, w I'm wasting time here. But not according to him, I'm not. So I have to keep that in mind. But yeah, I always like the interaction with you guys. It's so much fun. It's like having a whole gaggle of aficionados surround me without being surrounded you know don't have to go anywhere love it if i went to venture forth and try to find something similar where i live here i would be hard pressed to find enthusiasts the way we consider the word to be defined as orchid enthusiasts <laughs> it's also a matter of definition and perception what do you consider an enthusiast? Well, um, <laughs> don't know. You tell me and I'll see if I can concur. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to keep as in shot as possible. I hope it's working. Time will tell. 
but yeah it's so nice so keep them coming let me know how you're doing let me know if you have any concerns got the ninja clips for short answers you know lots of varieties quick vid if i think it's a little bit of a longer one but don't warrant all the time of a full-fledged complete video and of course a full-fledged complete video hakuna matata will do it there's some dead roots in the middle there but yeah i'm not seeing so much devastation that i need to start thinking of taking every single root apart maybe if i can get a little bit more exterior bark off this is working out better than expected let me just give it a little bit of a slosh <laughs> and mind that spike nina mind that spike because if it wants to bloom and can bloom don't interfere too much with that spike Right, I have come up against that core plug. The first little basket that it was ever in before it was bumped up a size. That's right in here now. Huh. I wonder. Yes, I'm wondering. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm wondering how far do I go? The fact it's not going in lava rock is giving me pause, you know? Maybe while I try to get some out, I can rethink. Let's see what comes out. All right, finish your thought, Nino. If it were to go into lava rock, then I would probably not fuss with this. I have more water retentive media in mind than lava rock. Also because of repotting, because the damage that lava rock will do when it comes time to repot a tolumnia is just exponential. And that's what I want to avoid. That is why I opted out of the lava rock option and I think I'm going to stick with my first thought no lava rock repotting roots are important so let's just be a little bit more diligent while we're here and just pretend we have all the time in the world at least to get the bulk out of the middle that's the rhizome there so we're good to go over there there's a little bit more happening right in here i'm just gonna go straight in and just chop the brown that i can see pick that out if i destroy some roots by doing this now seeing what i've done and how well i managed to get the bark off i'm okay with that because clearly we always have a like a gaggle of dead roots right in the middle but that doesn't mean that new roots don't grow around that it's not like they're saying, well, hey, those are dead. We're not going there. If that's the way they want to grow, then they'll go there. How are we doing? How are we doing? What's going on? There's another piece of bark. Now I'm a little bit more happy to have gotten all that bark out because seeing all this in here from the first little basket, hmm. Yes, that was not what I was expecting.
but we're airing it up nicely so yeah we're gonna be okay we're gonna be okay at least to give this setup a go we're gonna be okay because the middle is not too cluttered now and the bark is removed being the media that's really going to cause you know degrading and all that business going on in the pot so that's okay let's have a little assessment over here where's my spike it's over there uh, uh, uh. how are we doing how are we doing you have bugged me from the day you arrived goodbye <laughs> this little fan back here yeah see how weak that is we can take that off maybe we can cut this leaf why did the other one come off and this one is now being stubborn uh let's look let's look at what's going on back here it's very wet here okay tells me as well that my semi-hydro setup is going to still be something to be mindful of at least this one's not a climbing kind of tolumnia thank goodness climbing tolumnias and semi-hydro mm -mm -mm. Not a good idea. But my media will be drier on the top than this bark ever would be. So we'll just take that part off and have a little goo in here and see what's going on in here. That feels firm. I got a handle on that little bunch of roots. There we go. There's a bit of bark here, which is not going to bother me much. No, oh, there's a big piece down in here still. Let's see if my hands can get that out or if I have to go in with the knife and tweezers. Uh, we're going to remove you from the base. Awesome. Ta da! Right. A bit of pine. And the rest that I see is rhizome. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's a brittle piece of bark there. I don't want brittle. Yeah, we're going to get it out. There we go. Woohoo! We win. This one is so tiny. Oh, that just peeled off. I was going to say that's irrelevant. I was about to finish my sentence with that's irrelevant but no nope. okay there's another one in here it could be irrelevant but if it comes out we'll get it out you really have to make me get my tweezers for you really okay come on then there's another piece that is a little bit entangled right at the base here but it's nicely entangled and I'm not going to do that to the roots right here. I think we've got it. There's another piece back here. Do I dare? Let's see what comes off. Really? Tweezers for you too? Come on. There we go. How are you doing? Okay, you're loose. There we go. <laughs> uh, okay, now, having been so successful to this point, I think, <laughs> you know, it's best not to push my luck any further. I must say I am quite happy with what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> And I'd like to stay that way, not kick myself. Meanwhile, <laughs> oh, let's give this little area here a bit of a trim as well, right? Because we can. 
access is there. There we go. There we go. You think? You think? You keep saying, there we go. <laughs> oh, but it's such a beautiful day. <laughs> you know? It's not windy, it's not raining. Maybe a little bit on the noisy side. <laughs> if it was starting to rain, trust me, I'd be hustling a little bit more. <laughs> Let's just give this a little bit of a slosh and see what trickles off. <laughs> oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Right. I think she's good to go. Stop it. <laughs> okay, got that spike. All right, now let's assess what we're going to do with the setup. <sighs> Semi hydro and telumnia. We need luck. Right, let's clean this up a bit. Basket, anyone? Basket case, anyone? <laughs> I am. Hands up, I've got, I'm a basket case. <laughs> Gosh, I hope, well, to be safe, I'm gonna put them right here and hope not to spill any. In order of being used, so. Where's my pot? Don't make me get up now. I've got animals at my feet. There we go. And why are animal hairs on my pot? I just washed my pot. Come on. Seriously? I washed it, cleaned it, and I've put semi-hydro holes into it. This is a pot that was allocated for a Rapiculus Lelia. Meanwhile, I have more of these little guys but one of them is now going to be used for my Tolumnia because, size check, I think this is gonna be lovely jubbly for several, several years. That's why. Okay, now, very, very gross lecker shards are going in the pot as crocking because I have no other use for these shards. They're not big enough to crock any other pot, so, these are just from my dirty lecker from back in the day. Okay, so the next step is my orchid straight away. Is that too high? That's a bit too high. Don't want it that high because there are gonna be more layers on the surface. I just wanted to cover up the semi-hydro holes. And seeing as this orchid is pretty vigorous, yeah, still too high. What I'm trying to achieve is keep her low in the pot so that I have all my layers that I can put in and not so high. I don't have space for that because this is an awesome root system. And you know what? I think I'm going to need myself more Akadama. So there goes my tag. Let's put you in straight away so we don't jiggle. Always buy the semi-hydro holes so I know where you're at. And let's pour some of this in that I have. I have 50 grit, 50% Akadama. Very, very dry ratio. Normally I go 70, 30% or 60, 40. This is 50, 50 because I want to make sure that these little Tolumnia roots, even though being in semi-hydro, aren't soaking wet all the time. That is the plan. And let's see, I may need to fill up with more. Yep. I shall be making myself another bit of a mix here. And I'm going to put something to wedge the orchid in so that she doesn't fall on me while I'm away. And start scooting around. That should do it. I'll be right back. You see, I've got more Akadama. I don't have any more of this grit that I mixed in before. And I don't want to waste it because that's going on the top. And just in case I'm not too happy with what I'm seeing, I did bring tiny, tiny bits of lava rock just to make sure that if I need 
to dry out the media a little bit more and that is what I'm going to be able to use but ideally I want to avoid that so I'm just mixing in some tiny shards of Lekka from that same batch of dirty Lekka that I had a while ago that I picked out, separated <laughs> and saved for eventualities and well here we are, eventuality has arrived. So let's get you, maybe we shouldn't pot up the <laughs> cliff here. <laughs> Might not be such a bad idea, huh? There we go. There's a little bit more room for some back here. All right, let's give this a little bit of a, a jiggle. See what I can get to settle in or around. I'm sure there's a lot of air gaps in the root system right in the middle, but that's okay. Not really concerned about those air gaps. This is an orchid that would probably prefer <laughs> more air gaps in future than I'm going to give it. And the Akadama is pretty, pretty gentle. So I'm not concerned about bashing anything when I bash the pot. You can see she's already scooting herself to a side that I don't want her at. I want her nice and firm in the middle. I don't want to be touching this orchid. Again, this should last me at least <laughs> six years. If all goes well, that's the plan, of course, if all goes well. Right. Okay, let's fill her up. I like it. If this works out, I'm going to be over the moon. I can't tell you. I specifically saved my fine grit, the last of it, for this orchid. Mulling over how to get this orchid into semi-hydro. Make sure my bases don't rot, but still have the semi-hydro set up. And this grit here is perfect in size for the tiny, tiny roots, not to be messing about on the surface of the pot before they find their way in. And it's not as roughed up and has so many edges as lava rock does, because this tiny lava rock would have been ideal as well. But uh, lava rock and tolumnia roots, which is great when you can leave them in the setup. If I have to intervene in, oh geez, if I have to intervene in this setup, then I certainly don't want to be breaking any roots that have just grown on lava rock. The akadama is forgiving, as is this grit. The little lecker shards we may have some issues with, but they're far and few in between. There's more of the grit in there than anything else. Okay, let's get some water. Let's do a water test check. So here's the plan. A dry base around the orchid. Very dry base. There's at least a centimeter between the base of the orchid and where the Akadama actually starts. So I'm just checking to see how much dust is coming out of that water. I'd like to have it run clear. And also, I want to wet the Akadama as it went in dry, because that's the best way of handling Akadama while it's dry. I like how clear everything is. This could work for me. The only thing being, unfortunately, like I said, it's not in one of my wire baskets. But hey, this orchid is enormous. And I think we should celebrate that. <laughs> there we go. Oh, fingers crossed now because who knows if this is going to work. But I think so. I think it's going to be okay. There we go. Let's turn her around so at least we can appreciate the pretty blooms. There, that's better. Okay, well, 
If you stuck through with me throughout the entire video watching me fiddle around with some roots and bark, thank you so very, very much. Very much appreciate your time. And once again, any questions, goodness me, the comments are there, even if it has nothing to do with this video. I always look forward to hearing from you. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.